on 275 and 285 and stereo VHF, this is Chinivision. This channel prides itself in showing unemulated games on original hardware. And we've all been reading about the fiasco with the Vega lately. Will it come out? Won't it come out? Does it actually exist? Who knows? But handheld gaming using emulation has always been quite interesting. We used to have the Game Park and I used to have a Nintendo DS with a flash cart on the back that enabled you to play emulated games. But really, these days, it doesn't particularly interest me. However, I was on eBay the other night looking for retro goodies and it decided to throw this at me on my rather messy phone there. Can you see that? I'll bring it up on the screen. A 16-bit video game console with 150 plus games uh, with a big picture of Mario and lots of Sonic games shown um, promising things like 6,660, no, 660, many, many games on a cartridge with it um, in addition to 150 and it was claimed to be a 16-bit handheld portable PXP PVB games console, 150 retro Mega Drive DS video games with a big picture of Mario. £9.99. Oh, I'm thinking Pop Station. So I ordered one up using uh, the kind funds that Patreon supporters give to Chinivision. So I thought, well, okay, it's not original hardware, but this has got to be entertaining. So... Here it is, and I have had a look at it quickly and turned it on just to see if it works, because I also had to charge it up. But this is what arrives in this little bag here, a little black console, looking like a, oh, not very good on modern hardware, one of those PlayStation portable things, but a much, much lighter. And in the box, you also get, uh, basically, let's, let's just say that says one million in one actually says 999,666 in one. Very suspiciously light cartridge. Quite small. I've got a bat I bought battery here just to show the size of this thing as a an AA battery, just for the size of comparison of the console and the size of the cartridges. But wait, as they say on those uh, irritating adverts you see in the hardware store, there's more. We have nine hundred thousand in one random special cartridge and there you are in close and look at these tiny little cartridges like the original uh, it wasn't the ds what was on before that the game boy advance cartridges like that except much much flim is there anything in there Do these things actually have anything in them the edge connectors got anything on both sides sorry I'm, I'm moving them around when you should be looking at them but yeah they're, they're look they're tiny they're absolutely tiny so by my reckoning we've got about Two million games. Let's you know. Let's not beat around the bush here. We've got about two million games on those cartridges. That's well, every game you can imagine ever, and more. Um, so this is going to be interesting. Which brings me to another point there, because I think it actually, yeah, it does have built-in games as well. So I don't know how many it's got built in. Um, we go around the back. There is a battery, and it does arrive looking this mucky. I've not done anything to it. Look at it. It's got all those marks on there. Um, not marks, but just um, something or other. But the plastic is very, very cheap, as evidenced by how that back comes off there. And we've got a battery in the back there, a lithium-ion cell. Now, not necessarily a cheap one, because it, it's got a little bit of weight to it, much more than the cartridge has. Um, 700 milliamp hour, which isn't a lot, but I don't know how much this thing actually needs to power. It says rechargeable at battery pack i'm assuming it says on there and i thought this battery looked a bit familiar uh use only with the game boy advance sp so it's a game boy battery there we go that's the closest i can get you into it but yeah it's a game boy advance battery uh not a proper nintendo one obviously so goodness knows what the capacity actually is it's a chinese job but yeah so at least there's compatibility there if you buy one of these things and the battery knackers out. Well, you can go and buy a generic uh, SP battery from eBay. That's quite nice. Nice with vinyl AAs, of course. So we can see in there, there's a 3 to 7 to 3.8 volt battery required. A digital pocket system rechargeable lithium ion battery. 5.2 volts, uh, 320 milliamps. There is somewhere around here, I can't see it at the second, a uh, 
charger cable for it as well. I must have left that by the charging of uh, the USB charger. Uh, it doesn't come with a plug, but you just use any generic USB charger. And that seems to do the trick. I've just found that charger and or charging cable. It just comes with a standard USB charger, which I've been using to charge it with. And it also comes with this, which is a tiny little mini jack kind of uh, arrangement, 2.5 millimeter. Remember those from your remote socket on your Amstrad CPC tape recorder. And look, I think it's got some kind of TV output. And you get a manual. Ah, oh, I bet this is gonna be a belter. I say manual, it's a, it's a sheet of paper. Um, yeah, so it says, thanks for purchasing Playing Vision Portable, Playing Vision Portable product designed for many hours of game playing fun. This product is small and portable. You've told us that twice already, so you can take it anywhere. It's good because, you know, you don't really want to have a massive lead acid battery or something to take it around. So you've got a little uh, diagram there of what the buttons do. AC adapter, cartridge slot, power adapter, reset, uh, select and start. And you've got some other ones there. Uh, you've got some instructions there. Battery notice, uh, do not short start with battery contacts. So uh, that's... Uh, Fairly obvious. You've got the AV cable details there as well. Whenever you press the reset button, it will return to the selection screen. If the game crash, please press the reset button to restart. That's always a good start, isn't it? When it tells you about the game potentially crashing in the manual. Hmm. Uh, and the care maintenance. Do not disassemble or try to repair playing vision portable or any of its components. Just so you're portable in a humid place on the floor. It's not, it's not too bad. There's no howlers in here that I can see, unless you can. Like, I'm trying to read this from quite a way over here. Um, oh, hang on. Keep the kids. You can see that there. Keep the kids away from the cable or connecting wire, or it may circle around their neck and cause the accident. Once the kids overexert the wires and make the unit drop down to floor. Right. Okay. Basically, don't put the cord around your neck. We've got more on the back here. Uh, so we've got uh, a very small portion of the population now. Okay, the usual epilepsy warnings. And uh, do not sit close to television. And some problems and uh, kind of sort of things out there. It doesn't tell you what the games are or anything else about it. So here is the unit itself. It's a bit plasticky and it has a few weird marks on it. One speaker there, some Buttons that feel oh so cheap. Is that screen? Uh, oh, hang on, it's got one of those protector things on it. I think, I think, unless I've scratched it horribly. Um, can I get that off there? Two seconds. Yeah. Right, okay. For the benefit of people who enjoy this kind of thing. There you go. That's better. We can now see the screen and the glorious cheap plastic. Um, I've left a little mark there, that'll come off. I'm not going to clean that now. But this is £10 delivered. £10. Um, I don't usually kind of go for these kind of mega drive and mass system, what have you, and uh, things you see on eBay for £40 or £50. But £10, I couldn't resist it. But already with that battery, you're thinking that's not bad. But I don't know what it's actually going to be like. Is it really just going to be a pop station thing? Or one of those kind of L. It looks like a proper LED screen there. It's called a Slim Station on there. PXP3 Slim Station. So this being Chini Vision, of course, I had to open it up and have a look at the workings on the inside. If it's going to go back together again, I don't know. But you've got your screen there, which as I say is quite nice. Quite a nice display. And that is connected by a ribbon connector there. You've basically got two chips on the board there. A blob which means it's probably some kind of uh, either chip they want to cover over or it's one of those die on board kind of uh, gubbing things where there's no ceramic package around it. It just sits on the board. It's, it's cheaper to do that. I'm kind of thing the EV blog talks about and I'm not much of an expert on, so I'm not going to talk too much about it. You've got another chip there. Now, I'm, that's a funny old arrangement there um, with this kind of separate, almost a tiny little board soldered onto the main board there. So that's interesting. But... There's nothing in here really. That's how they get it down to ten pounds. Screen if the screens are, if those screens cost fifty p something like that. That's absolutely amazing. If LCD screens are now so cheap that you can put a semi decent, probably only three twenty by two hundred display inside there, then that's absolutely 
amazing. We can't put it off. Um, we're going to have to turn it on. Oh. Any... Music? If you guys can hear that. Sounds vaguely familiar. Oh no! Well, for the purposes of uh, copyright, it definitely is not playing Don't Cry For Me Argentina. Um, I suspect, you know, ripping off uh, Sir Tim Rice uh, is the least of this device's problems. Looking at some of the games on the title screen there. Angry Birds. That's, uh, I'm going to give a retro... Oh, Streets of Rage on there. I can't really see the screen from over here. Let's turn the lights off and get a bit of a closer look. I'll get you into that screen a bit closer. Right, well, I've been setting that up. It's still been playing Don't Cry For Me, Argentina, at me on her a horrific loop and out of tune. Hopefully this doesn't bode badly for the game itself or the console itself. I have propped it up on its own leads there. I'm hoping I'm going to keep it in view. It does have an AV out, but I want to show this screen because from this angle, it's a little bit um, washed out. But over when you center on, dead onto it, it looks absolutely wonderful. Um, hard to believe. Certainly better than kind of retro consoles we had back in the day. I can't always read what's on this screen, so I apologize. Oh, Sonic 3D, Sonic the... Let's try Sonic the Hedgehog. Press start button. There we go. Well, that looks, um, I'm not too familiar with Sonic 3. I've got it. I haven't played it that much. Right, so. I think it's Angel Island or Nigel Island. Oh, it's on demo mode. Okay, let's let one on demo mode and see what it looks like. Can I actually play it? How do I... these buttons actually do, I think? Oh, there we go. We've got save options. I wonder if the save options actually work. Anyway, we can try that later. Did it? I paused it. Apologies for the creaky noise my hands are making on the table. I don't you... <laughs> set up handhelds. Well, I'm not going to play this at all. There's um the uh, old doodah face. Shadow. I'm down with the kids. I know all about all the latest games like Sonic 3. I think the music sounds wrong. Um, it's, uh, the screen's lovely. I mean, you can't see it at an angle, but Dead on. I don't. I'm looking through the camera viewfinder there, or the screen. That's how I'm actually playing it because I can't see it too well. And it looks all right. Um, quite not for ten pounds. Ten pounds. I mean, this is from a UK seller as well. So he's had to buy it in from China, ship it over, and then make a profit on ten pounds. So how much is this actually costing wholesale? And he posted it, um, which would have been about £2.50, £3. So how much is this thing actually costing to make? It can't be anything at all. Let's press the reset button. Let's look at some of these other games. So here we go with some capture of the PXP3 Slim Station. And I'm speaking to you from the future. Well, my future, because I did this bit after I did all the stuff at the table because you've got to capture setup and all the rest of it. So here we are on the menu of the default cartridge, the built-in cartridge. We're going to load up a game. It is composite, and it doesn't look particularly good even for composite. So let's go for cannon fodder. And yes, 
the music is wrong. And one thing I've noticed is when you plug in the external connector, the entire device seems to slow down. I assume it works at 60 hertz when it's on the internal screen, 50 hertz with the uh, external output, because this is PAL, it's a PAL output. I set everything up for NTSC, assuming it will be NTSC, but no, this is PAL. And also, this is my second device, because I had to buy another one, because when I took that apart to have a look on the inside, uh, it wouldn't go back together again. Uh, we've got a little bit of patterning on the screen there, uh, interference. The connector into the unit is incredibly small. It's the old 2.5 millimeter jack that you may have had on your cassette recorders for the remote socket. Um, so it, it does move around um, and cause interference on the screen, especially because you're holding the device as a controller. But um, audio issues aside, Canon folder seems to work pretty well. Um, the controls aren't particularly intuitive compared to the mouse. Not say intuitive, not as good as using the mouse on the Amiga, but it's mobile cannon fodder. Shame those controllers uh, buttons are so slippery. Let's have a look at some of the other games and rebooting it, turn it back on. So let's go find another game. And Desert Strike should be a good test to see how fast it it's scrolls around. The device, uh, the original device I tested had, um, as you saw on Sensible Soccer when we played that on the screen, um, it, there was interference and it was, the screen was rolling. My new device doesn't do that. Um, again, I don't know why, so we're playing Desert Strike and it's, it's good enough. Um, if it, if you like your emulation accurate, then this isn't it, but it works. It's very much like the early days of Mega Drive emulation on the PC, really. I remember playing all oh, on a probably an early Pentium, one of the early uh, emulators, and the speed was wrong, the sound was a bit wrong, but it got the general feeling of the game. This is Doriman, a game that we reviewed when we did the Japanese game roundup. Got the cartridge of this, and the music is very wrong. The music's very slow. Um, it's running at 50 hertz, I suppose, but this is the least game I've got um, up and running so we can compare it. Again, you have to question who the audience is for this really hardcore gamers. No, you're not going to want to play Doraman at the wrong speed with Duff Audio, um, even if it is better, but um, better on NTSC. But um, here's a side-by-side -side comparison, Mega Drive on the right, and you can hear the Mega Drive Audio. So uh, the Slim Station, the XP3, um, has a fatter screen, it's wider, it's stretched out slightly compared to the real thing, and that capture I did there was from an NTSC version on the Mega Drive. So, um, yeah. Uh, this is a game I found on the cartridge, Bible Adventures, not one I've heard of before, but it sounds very exciting. So the story is, the Pharaoh gave his order to all of his people, every boy that is born you must throw into the Nile. That's not very nice. Oh, connection problems again. What are you going to do? Right, I am the lady there. And I'm not going up on my Bible stories. Do I have to leave the baby in the bulrushes? I don't know. Anyway, I've left him there. Oh, we've lost connection on the connector. Great. Get it back. Right, we're back. Yeah, this is like a Master System game, but we're playing a Mega Drive, unless this is a conversion of another game system. But it's obviously a Mega Drive emulator. This is pretty rubbish. Um, a bit like Super Wonder, Bo Wonder Boy, but um, with the Bible. Good work, but you forgot Baby Moses. Oh dear. And Don't Cry For Me Argentina still plays on the title screen. This is one of the other cartridges. And we're going to try Sensible Soccer. And now this, as I say, when I recorded that first unit, it rolled. The screen rolled. 
but since I broke that unit, I've got another one, and this one seems fine on the screen to play Sensible Soccer. So let's see what it's like on the capture. It's not going to be fully accurate. The music is incredibly duff and possibly missing some of the channels. But, um... Yeah, so we can select England there. Let's go home nations. Let's select Wales. Play the game. Controls are fiddly. Right, it's got to change this around. This is the version where they had to change all the names very, very slightly. So you've you got Lie Doxon, not uh, Lee Dixon, of course. To change the team around a bit, going to put Tony Adams on. Um, oh, Celez can't be a substitute. We've got to play Celez up front there. We'll take Ian right off. Big hello to all the Arsenal supporters there who are now screaming at the screen. Got a friendly. England versus Wales. This is going to end badly. And the, you can see how bad the composite signal is. The reds are all over the place. In fact, they, they, are, they, appear, they appear. The timing appears to be so bad. They are literally half a half a character to the left of the players. Oh, but it's recognisably sensey. None of that rolling screen stuff we saw originally on that first handheld. Passing it nicely. Oh, the controls are very slippery again. You can't get. Oh, you just can't get your fingers just on those buttons without them slipping off. It's not going to bode well for a game like this where you need to be absolutely precise. Oh no, I didn't do well there at all. Got to review Sensi on the channel at some stage. I've, it's one of those ones where when it's done, it's done. So I've kind of been putting it off. There are some games I've always regretted tackling so early, like Feud. Uh, this is Alex Kidd. Uh, one of the very first Mega Drive games. Audio sounds better. I still got that weird. Is that, yeah, there's a still very slight picture fault there. The blues are all over the place. But you know, this thing costs £10. Here we are complaining. Right, here I am complaining about this. The thing to remember about this device is it costs £10 delivered. If it costs more than that, I'd be going, oh, it's not right. What? You know, this is a complete disgrace. This is a thing to give your kids for to play a few retro games in the back of the car. You aren't going to notice there's a few faults and then they can graduate to the, the real deal and get the actual, uh, you know, proper quality and proper speed and undistorted audio. Or if you just want something a bit disposable on the move, again, this isn't too bad. And you can play Dizzy as well. Here's the Mega Drive Dizzy game. Yeah, the colours are all a bit muted, but it's composite again. It's not a particularly good composite signal either, but it'll do. One thing I did notice, and this is clearly a PAL unit running at 50 hertz, 50 frames a second, is that when you plug the external video in, the unit slows down to PAL speeds and things get a bit more distorted and wrong. So what do I think of the PXP3 Slim Station or the Playing Vision Portable or whatever it's actually called? Well, it is £10 and quite frankly, how you do this for £10, I've got no idea because this would have had to have been imported from China, uh, bought over here, duty paid, VAT paid, all the rest of it. And then the retailer in the UK has to sell this and post it for £10 which is absolutely insane when you think of what's what goes into this, just the battery and the bits and pieces and the plastics. I can't understand it. Is it a remaindered item? I just don't know. 
Um, the emulation is completely out. The games are at the wrong speed, they're glitchy, and the audio is frankly bizarre and too deep. However, I'm not going to slate this because it is just £10. This isn't for you and me. We're not going to want one of these. There's much better ways to emulate stuff on. You can hack a PlayStation, get your old DS out, um, all sorts of things, or buy one of the higher spec one of these. However, this is absolutely brilliant for kids who want to get into emulation because, yeah, things are a bit glitchy and aren't the right speed, but you and I notice when perhaps the kids won't because it's their introduction. And critically, because of the price, you can give this to the kids. If they break it, it's £10. Um, if they lose it, it's, if they drop it like that, it's £10. And, you know, they carry on a PlayStation Portable, a couple of hundred pounds worth of console, they leave it at school, they break it. Um, that's a lot of money to lose, but one of these, it, it's a throwaway disposable item. It's like if you're going somewhere, perhaps yourself, on holiday where you don't want to take expensive electronics, but you want to play some retro games, you could take this, and if it gets stolen, uh, so what? Um, you'd just be without retro games for the rest of the holiday. Um, if this was £40, I would give it a complete slating. But for £10, wow, it's absolutely fantastic value for money. Get one just to play around with or give it to the kids. But either way, it's the cheapest way of retro gaming on the move, regardless of the accuracy.